Okay folks, Orchard Beach, salt water, as promised. Uh, the beach itself, uh, it's not too crowded. Uh, everybody's keeping their distance, but this is the fishing area, which if you're facing the beach is to the left. There's a yellow um, marker and you can fish anywhere to the left of that, to that, of that marker. So found a little spot here. There's plenty of other people fishing. Not like it's a secret spot. I'm not spot burning. So um, I have a new reel. This is an Okuma um, Rockaway. It's a 6,000 size. Definitely the biggest reel I've ever owned. Still have my old kind of crappy surf casting rod. It's probably not long enough either. But anyway, I'm trying to kind of just bring it out to practice today. Um, so this is going to handle the bigger baits. You'll see that in a second. I don't even know if there's fish big enough to eat them. And I have my smaller high-low setup that I might put the bait that I caught in my creek in Pennsylvania the other day on, on that line. So anyway, let's get rigged up and get in the water. So I'm going to try chunking for, uh, I don't know, striped bass, I guess. Big old uh, bunker heads and other bunker pieces. I'm gonna put a three ounce weight on here. Got a little uh, clip for the weight here. This is your uh, classic fish finder rig. The idea here is the fish can uh, munch on this for a while and bring out the line without feeling the resistance of the weight. You can always downsize the bait too. Start big, start and then go small from there. All right, this will be the inaugural cast. We'll see. It kind of feels too heavy for this rod, but oh, it's got to go farther than that. I don't think that's very deep water. Anyway, for my smaller high-low rig with the smaller hooks for the smaller fish, I got my dead micros from the other day. That's a tiny bluegill, I think. We have a little creek chub. All right. Damn it. I should bring my micro fishing stuff to every single place I go. Because look at this. This would be so much fun. Next time, I guess. And then there's even some in these little rock pools. Check this out. Look at these little guys. See them? Starting to and to and fro. It's crazy. So now it's my favorite part. We just sit in a chair and wait. I love waiting. So this guy caught a porgy not too long ago. I feel like most people are using, uh, you know, smaller setups oriented for fish that are smaller than striped bass. He's, he's definitely got a high rig, high low rig going. Um, and I think he's might have another bite here. Now he's slipping. Believe it or not, there's little fish in this this puddle too. I like catch him with my hands, but you know it won't count. I just had a big hit. Yep. It's a keeper. Nothing huge. All right, I ran out of my dead freshwater minnows so uh, these are little pieces of bunker this bunker has been frozen and unfrozen a few times a few other attempts where uh, also nothing happened um, the challenge with this stuff is um, the meat is kind of like soft and it probably gets worse as you freeze and unfreeze it so you really got to hook it through the skin and there's still a good chance it's gonna just slide right off so We'll see. Looks like uh, the guy who keeps catching them is using blood worms, which 
I obviously don't have access to. Okay, I gave up on the fish finder with the big chunks of bunker. These are small chunks of bunker on a high-low rig. I kind of like what's on the other line, but I like medium, medium chunks. Pretty quick after tossing this in. Oh, oh, that's your line, sorry. Oh, it's a sea robin. It's a robin. Ah, oh, he got off. Sorry. Thanks, I'll try to cast the, a little farther to the other side. Yeah. Okay, nobody wants to see me catch another sea robin. Sorry. I'm just gonna cut my line, it's... And I think it's also tied up on my other one. Unless you think you can get it out. I'll just cut my line if you want. All right, sorry man, thanks. Well, this is gonna be the last time I send it out. Getting very overheated. And uh, it's frustrating just losing a bunch of equipment on the rocks and watching other people catch fish. So unless something happens letting it sit here, I guess you'll be seeing this in December or November or January. Whenever things aren't working out for me. I don't think the camera was even pointed in the right direction, but I'm finally finally got a sea robin. We can end it with a fish. Uh, I guess I'll take it home and do something with it. Um, but the more interesting thing, when I went out there to get it, and it was harrowing, let me tell you. Look at all this line that like my legs got tied up in. We got a nice new looking lure here. It's probably only been in the water for a day or two. Nice white swim bait. We got at least one high-low rig with 
nice new hooks. We got two nice little weights, about three ounce, yeah, they're both three ounce weights, I think. Um, and we got maybe four, four or five different people's lines, and there's still way more out there. So this, this place is trash, no wonder I kept getting snagged. Um, and uh, I guess that's what happens when you come to a, a really popular spot. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is, it's bananas down there. Um, so if you're gonna come here, I would try to get out to as far of a point as you can and uh, try not to cross other people's lines and all that stuff. I still don't know if I'm really gonna show you guys much of this, but uh, you know, I'm glad I finally got my little sea robin, but wish there was wish there was more for me out in the salt water than than this. Sh anyway, guys, please like, please subscribe, and as always. All right, guys, it's uh, early August, but uh, you're definitely seeing this uh, in the off months. Um, figured I should document it somehow. Um, so there was that big tropical storm, uh, Isaac, Isaiah, it starts with an I, I'll put it down here. But um, our power's been out for like 30 hours. Um, and uh, you can, on, on the road right over there, you can see what happened. A uh, tree fell on the power lines, broke one telephone pole in half, another one's like kind of halfway broken. Um, and uh, so they got the tree out of the road, but power's still out like everywhere. So. Um, what does that mean? Well, it means that everything that's in the fridge and the freezer is uh, gonna go bad if it's perishable. Um, so I have a lot of fish. Um, I have some panfish that I caught in back in May. We have rock bass, red breast sunfish, bluegill. I wanted to kind of like do like a sampling thing, but we just gotta get this stuff on the grill. Um, and then I have um, a sea robin that I caught like two days ago. Um, so I'm just gonna cook it all up. I'm not gonna do anything too interesting with it because uh, it's go time But uh, we're gonna put some probably some butter some garlic maybe oil instead um, Maybe do something interesting with this um, Ghost pepper uh, rum infusion that I made with the ghost peppers that I'm growing right over there um, but uh, Yeah, I'm just kind of documenting this uh, Hopefully we don't have too much that's gonna spoil. The deep freeze is a big concern. Um, there's nowhere to buy a generator uh, within you know hundreds of miles, but we did order one that should work for at least one fridge or freezer at a time. And uh, it's supposed to get here by nine o'clock tomorrow. So they say deep freezers can go about 48 hours, but refrigerators can only go like four hours. And all the fridge stuff that we want is already like in coolers and stuff on ice um so anyway uh let's go over to the grill i'll show you what's going on all right so uh is this hot enough why did i do that i think it's hot enough um so i should say the fish wasn't in the deep freezer is in the upstairs freezer which is already like room temperature and that's why i really just gotta take care of it we're not even opening the deep freezer at the moment all right, so this here is our bluegill. It actually might be a pumpkin seed, but either way. This was before I learned how to do boneless fillets, so everything's got bones. This is our rock bass. Never tried rock bass before, so smoke's getting my eyes. This is our red breast sunfish. And this is our sea robin from just the other day. Should have put oil on before, but that's all right. Got some garlic out here. Chopped garlic. This is Swiss chard from the garden. Should reduce down very, very quickly. <laughs> Nothing. YouTube. This is gonna be an, a winter extra. I'm not gonna put this out now. This is just like, I'll put it out when things get boring. Oh, you too. I you meant you too, like you and Pat. Hey guys! You can make that taste food. You can make that taste food. <laughs> I'll ask you in the winter whether you want me to put this up or not. Hey, skip it. Cut this part out. Okay. <laughs> I'll cut it out for sure. Just kidding. I won't. I'll put it up. Yeah. Make it your thumbnail. 
we put a little butter like inside each of these guys or well i guess on top whatever okay some this is actually some salad dressing guys gonna go on the swiss chard and it's okay if it mixes with the fish hey guys this is the ghost pepper rum maybe we should put it on something that's not too big should we put it on the put it on the rock bass Probably gonna get into everything. It's already going down to the bluegill. Okay, guys, might not look that appetizing, but this is Blackout 2020 Fish Surprise. Rock bass, uh, red breast sunfish, bluegill and or pumpkin seed, and uh, sea robin. All just cooked with uh, oil and butter and garlic, salt and pepper, and particularly on the rock bass, but probably leaked into the rest of this stuff, um, is some ghost pepper infused rum. And there's uh, some, some Italian salad dressing that was uh, cooked along with the Swiss chard and probably also soaked into the fish. So I'm gonna taste it for you in a sec. Okay guys, so before I go ahead and plate this for my wife and I, I'm just gonna quickly taste it for you. You know, these special features in the winter. It's like whatever, dude. All right, first we're gonna try the Swiss chard. And a nice little hunker, little hunker do there. Okay. Delicious. If you ever had spinach, it's very similar. Um, a bit on the oily side with all that salad dressing, but very flavorful. Garlic comes through. A little bit of a tang to it. Great. All right. Sea robin. This is the most recently caught, just a couple days ago. I didn't bone debone any of this, so whatever, dude. Lots of bones, but as always, sea robin comes through. Lots of bones. Very good though, as always, it's a very meaty, very firm fish. I think I've referred to it in the past as like the catfish of salt water. Similar kind of mouth feel. All right, red breast sunfish, never tried it before. I'm sure it's gonna taste a lot like other sunfish. Spit in there? This one's really good. I don't know if it's how I cooked it or what, but this one's also kind of firm. Not, not much of a fish flavor at all. Really took on the, the garlic and oil very well. Red breast sunfish, good. All right, moving on. Bluegill. We've had plenty of bluegill before, so let's do this guy real quick. Yeah, it's very mild. Not, not, you know, it is what it is, but it's a little chewy, a little chewier than the red breast. Might just be how I cooked it, might be how thick it was, and that's a good one too. Probably the least, um, it absorbed the least flavor of all of these so far. Okay, now the rock bass. We were very curious about tasting a rock bass when I caught it. Let me take a little off the tail here. Never tried a rock bass before. also had the ghost pepper rum there is a little bit of heat not much though and this one is a little fishy this is the fishiest of any of these um, I would say similar to largemouth bass if you've ever eaten largemouth bass all right well guys hope you enjoyed I know we had to throw this together real quick I know it's nothing really new or exciting but um, just uh, understand the situation going on we had to get this stuff cooked or it was gonna just so um good stuff like subscribe i hope we're out like ice fishing or doing something fun at this point in the year but if not this is all we can do so fish like there's no tomorrow peace